Hello and welcome to this next section, Online Subsystems and Network Sessions. We'll start with learning about what the online subsystem is and why it's used before moving on to implementing the online subsystem session interface to create, find, and join network games. After that's all taken care of, we'll cap off the section by connecting the menu interface we created in the last section to our code to properly host and connect to our game. With that said, let's jump into this first video. In this video, we're going to get a brief overview of what the online subsystem is, why we use the online subsystem, how to use the online subsystem, and the various interfaces that we can access from within the online subsystem. Among those interfaces, we're going to learn what the sessions interface is and what the session interface does. So let's jump in. So what is the online subsystem? The online subsystem and its interfaces exist to provide a clear abstraction to common online functionality across the various available platforms such as Steam, Xbox Live, PSN, Facebook, and more. The main goal of the online subsystem is to create portable, reusable code when migrating to new platforms and services. The online subsystem is used to implement common functionality such as user profiles, friends lists, session management, which is the subject of this section, cloud services, user cloud services, leaderboards, voice chat, achievements, and external UI. By using the online subsystem, or rather the various plugins for it, developers can integrate online services from various platforms in a unified manner without having to learn each platform's specific API and intricacies. To use the online subsystem, you're first going to need to include the module inside your project name build.cs file by adding the private dependency module names online subsystem. You'll then need to indicate your default platform service in your default engine.ini file under an online subsystem tag. With that done, you access the online subsystem within code by calling the getter method from the online subsystem interface by calling i online subsystem double colon get. To access the functionality provided by the various online subsystem interface, we need to make heavy use of delegates. The general pattern for gaining access to an online service goes something like this. First, you're going to create a function that will be called when your specific action is completed, in this case, hosting a game. You'll then declare a delegate and a delegate handle for registering this function with the delegate system. Thirdly, you're going to create your delegate before using it. Then, before you call your specific functionality, you're going to register your delegate with the online subsystem and retain the handle in the delegate handle we created earlier. You then call the function on the interface that you're working with, and upon completion, it's going to call your delegate function. Within the delegate function, you're going to have to make sure to clear your delegate handle this pattern of declaring and using delegates is repeated for most, if not all, the functionality you will be accessing within the online subsystem. So, as mentioned previously, in this lesson we're only going to be utilizing a single interface to the online subsystem, the session interface. The session interface is responsible for registering and managing networked or online game servers. Among the session interface's responsibilities are creating network matches, joining network matches, updating network match information, destroying network matches, and matchmaking. We'll be tackling all these functions, so we should know the basic life cycle of a session. So for the basic life cycle of a session, it starts off by creating the match, either locally or as a dedicated server in a cloud. We then register the server with the session interface, we wait for players, play the match, and then restart or destroy the server at the end. We're going to go through each and every one of these lifecycle steps throughout the course of this lesson. There's some built-in functionality for handling many of these steps for us. However, since we want as deep of knowledge into the system as possible, we'll be implementing our entire system ourselves. There's one more important thing we need to know about sessions before moving on. When creating a session, the host provides a list of session settings which specifies important information about the game that is to be created. Most notably among these are the number of players allowed, is the session advertised as public or private, is the session hosted as a LAN server, 
Is the server dedicated or player hosted? And are friend invites allowed? Alongside the built-in settings to be provided can also be an array of user-defined settings, which I like to refer to as special settings. These settings are information about a server which aren't built in and are useful to hosts and potential players alike. Examples of these settings could be a custom server name and whether or not the game is in a lobby or in progress. I'll be showing you how to implement these special settings as well. And that's all the essential information needed for getting started in working with online subsystem. There's plenty more I could say, however I feel it's more practical to go straight to the implementation as using it will make the pattern much clearer.